Hey, are UFOs real? And if they are, what are they? What are your thoughts? Put them in the comments below. Roll the intro. Hey guys, it's Eric. Thanks for checking out another Hatchet Cast episode. And today we're going to be talking about the Resistance 9 suppressor from Griffin Armament. But before we get started, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button. I know this sounds so robotic, but a lot of folks ask us like, what can we do to help? We love the channel. What, what is the best way to support you guys? Hitting the like and subscribe button legitimately actually real world helps us. Um, also, the notification bell allows you to see a new episode. And then when you watch that episode and you watch it, that also helps us. So watching the episodes all the way through, uh, I love the comments that are like, hey, here's a comment for the algorithm. You guys, it, you guys get it. Uh, so it really does help put food on the table for me and Roy. Uh, you know, we are going full time this year. Another great way to support us is becoming a member or a subscribe member. We're going to be doing training on those uh, that channel for the subscribe members. So we will be actually putting out training videos, things that we can't talk about also on this platform, we will be putting for those members, you know, maybe some crew serve weapon type stuff, maybe some, uh, you know, things about assembly and disassembly and, and all those types of things we will be putting on a different platform. So that will be only for subscribed members. So if you wanna have access to that training and all the kinds of stuff that we can't post here, go support us that way by subscribing onto that uh, paid subscription uh, channel. And that will really, really help us out. Like I said, we thank you all from the bottom of our hearts for all the support that you guys have given us. And it's amazing to be a part of the Barrel and Hatchet community. All right, so the Griffin Armament Resistance 9 Suppressor. Okay, so first we're gonna go ahead and jump into specs. After we go into specs, I'll talk a little bit about what my experiences have been with the can. And then also I'll bring up, are pistol caliber cans worth a pint of urine? Uh, you know, are they, are they worth it? Um, and also I think, you know, some scenarios where I think that they could be applicable. So let's go ahead and jump right into this. Usually if you get this straight out of the box, it will say it's gonna have a silencer tube body, has the EcoFlow baffle assembly, so they have an EcoFlow system. That whole flow through type of thing is a big deal right now. Uh, it is working, it's a part of the evolution of suppressors. It does come with a front cap, which is removable, so if you do get a baffle strike on the end of that cap, they, you can replace it. It does have the boost assembly, retainer, spring, O-ring, and housing. There is no cam lock piston included, so if you're gonna run this on a, on a pistol specifically, like you're actually gonna mount it, to your pistol, you need to make sure you have a cam lock piston and you're gonna have to get that separate. It does come with a wrench uh, so that we can take it all, all apart. Front cap tool and then you get a pouch. Actually, their pouch is actually kind of cool. Um, I like it. And then obviously, of course, you get your manual, which you do go ahead and take right and put in the right in the trash because men, we don't read instructions. Maybe that's changing. Maybe guys read instructions these days. I don't know. All right. Um, so some stuff that you can also get for maintaining this thing is your cleaning brushes, some thread sealant, high temp anti-seize, O-rings, um, replacement three lug or piston springs. Here, here's what I'm gonna say about the piston. So they actually sent us a three lug uh, adapter so we could attach it to this ZF5K. Um, and that was really, really cool. There's actually a little spring system where it kind of pops on and pops off, which makes it super fast to, I guess you could call it QD, quick detach. Um, or quick attach. Um, so having that three leg system, it's been around forever. H&K invented it. Uh, they've had that forever, but it's a really cool perk. So you can direct thread this to your can or your uh, pistol. You can direct, or uh, excuse me, direct thread it to a sub gun or something of that nature. You can do the three lug. Now these are separate attachments. You can do the three lug, which I highly recommend. This thing is freaking awesome. Um, or you can do their easy. They have an actual, uh, I actually have it right here. It's a, a a device that you put onto your pistol and it is literally like a quick thread. Like it's like one, one and a half turns, two turns, and it goes on really, really fast. So if you're gonna run it on pistol, you, de you do need to have your um, piston and that piston is super important, which I found out. I haven't been shooting pistol cans for a long time. So this is a, a kind of a good experience for me. 
Um, you can maintain these, so you can actually unscrew the back cap and or the front cap, and you can take all the baffles out. So if you need to, you know, replace it or get new ones, that's super nice. Um, the the actual the body itself is what serialized. So uh, maintaining your suppressor, I think that's a huge deal, especially for suppressors these days. Who wants to wait a flipping year again? for another tax stamp if it's destroyed or something happens and you gotta send it back. It's just a pain, dude. So like having the ability to maintain the can yourself is really, really nice. Um, so those are overall kind of things and features of this can. Now I will say this, experience. It's freaking awesome. Uh, I love shooting pistol caliber carbines um, or, um, you know, sub guns actually i would say i like sub guns so this thing if you haven't seen the video on the zenith uh we did the video on this recently go check it out really really cool review really really great system but this thing on here it's nice real nice has a little bit of spice on there um it has been awesome like for me as a, as a southpaw or as a, as a fancy word for saying lefty best handed for all you guys in the comments section um what's really really cool about shooting suppressed a good suppressor versus a bad suppressor or over gas systems i can tell because i get all that gas in my face um their eco flow system they have on this is great it helps mitigate some of that gas that i was experiencing in my face and just kind of made it a lot more pleasurable to shoot um the other cool thing is throwing this on a pistol. It is super, super lightweight. So shooting it on a pistol was a lot of fun. Um, having that easy lock system where you can kind of like do a couple of turns and it goes right on to the pistol uh, is really, really nice. And actually I'm running a Griffin Armament threaded barrel and they come with this threaded protector micro comp. So it's a thread protector for your pistol. It's also a compensator, like a micro compensator, and it is freaking gnarly. I will say this is awesome. It is, it actually does take a little bit of bite of the recoil off there. It does make a difference. I've shot with it off and I've shot with it on. Um, and it's, it's nice. They have it for Glock as well. The other cool thing is their threaded barrel is super accurate. So if you're gonna run a th suppressor, getting a Griffin Armament threaded barrel with their micro comp, usually the threaded barrel will actually come with the compensator. And then you can get their can. It, it's an all-in-one solution. It's a one-stop shop. So um, I highly recommend the can itself. Um, as far as it heating up, we actually had a burn proof gear uh, suppressor cover on the can for a little while. So here we go. Burn proof gear, go check them out if you want a suppressor cover. Um, but it was not really that hot. Like these pistol suppressors don't get super, super hot unless you're doing full auto a bunch, but just doing like a standard string of fire, it doesn't get hot the same way that like a 5.56 can does. You know, you shoot like four rounds on a 5.56 can, you can barely touch it. Um, you don't experience that with this uh, and it's, it's, it's kind of nice. And I think it's just pistol cans in general. You don't have to worry about that heat so much. Um, but it's overall experiences has been fantastic like this thing is amazing plus if you like shooting sub guns it's even better um, having the the suppressor on there adds a factor a cool factor but also the cool thing about pistol caliber suppressors is the fact that you can kind of go quiet because some of those nine mil rounds or those pistol rounds are going subsonic they're not going supersonic like a rifle round so you can actually get that movie quiet with these types of cans so if you're thinking about doing it and you're not sure it, it adds a capability um, now, one thing that people are gonna ask is like, well, why do I really need it? Um, what's the application? You know, we talked about in the Zenith video about a go bag gun or a get home gun. So if you're out and about and you're trying to get home to get to your actual stuff, um, you know, having a pistol caliber type of, uh, you know, like a sub gun is nice because you can transfer the ammo from a pistol to this. Um, if you find ammo laying around, you can put it through a sub gun. And also this increases your survivability if you run into that type of scenario, right? Because the whole point of suppressors is to increase my survivability. It's a survivability tool. It either, you know, dissipates the shot where I can't really tell where that shot came from, or it makes it, it quiets that shot down. So it's, it's harder to locate where I'm at, where the shot's coming from. You know, if I'm even there, if it's super quiet and you're shooting subs or like real fat, like 147s, you know, you're gonna be movie quiet. So that's a huge advantage, especially if you don't want to attract attention to yourself, you're just trying to get home so you can get to your family and you can go ahead and get all your stuff, your actual battle rattle stuff. So I think this, 
the having that that suppressor on there does add a lot more to your capability when it comes to being able to survive in a non-permissive environment. Um, but with that being said, you can also attach this to a pistol. So it gives you some versatility. If you wanted to run this with just a pistol and you don't have a sub gun, now I can make my, my pistol shots a lot quieter and harder to distinguish where I'm at. So I think if you don't want to attract attention to yourself, it does play a vital role. Now let's talk about like a more combative type role. Um, if you're doing a recce type mission, having a suppressor, um, you know, in Vietnam, the MACV SOG guys, they would actually carry suppressed 22s for killing dogs and their handlers. Uh, and the reason for that is like, hey man, I'm gonna put a little bit of mustard gas here, powder, they would actually carry mustard gas powder, they'd leave it behind, and then they would wait in ambush to kill the dog and the tracker, so that way they wouldn't be found, but at the same time, not attract attention to themselves. So, suppressors on pistols have come from a legacy period of in World War II, they were highly used by the OSS. They're still being used today, and it definitely adds a capability to you. I would say it's, as far as the weight goes, it doesn't weigh as much to make it like an issue of like, oh, I don't know if I wanna bring that, it's too heavy. It's little, I know ounces equal pounds, but it literally increases your survivability. So I, I highly recommend if you have a 5.56 can already or a 30 cal can, like, you know, one that covers all your rifles and you're looking for another suppressor to give you another capability, I would look at a pistol suppressor um, just because it helps you to maintain that stealth and also it, it broadens your capabilities. It broadens the options that you have in whatever scenario you may run into. You know, the fact that you can take their baffles out and replace them and have them replaced or the end caps, makes it a huge, uh, a huge benefit for the shooter. So um, yeah, hopefully you guys like that. If you, if you like more of this type of stuff, go check out our Zenith video where we talk about the sub gun and its application. Uh, and then I'm gonna talk real quick about a scenario. So imagine you're at work, you live in an urban environment. So you live like kind of in the city, uh, but you live in the suburbs to get home. And all of a sudden, all the electricity in your building goes out. So all the electricity goes out, all your coworkers are kind of panicking, like what the heck's going on? You know something bad's going down, your, your, you know, your family is at home. Uh, and so all you can think about is, holy crap, I gotta figure out how to get home. And also there's a highway where it's rush hour traffic and everybody's got the same idea. Um, so you run down to your car, uh, you know, car doesn't work, but you open up the car, bust the window because you can't get in because it's locked and you grab your go, your get home bag, and then you sling that and you start making your way out. And all of a sudden you start hearing gunfire and people screaming off in the distance. And you go into an alleyway and you go and find this little work closet and you start to kind of build a game plan. As you're building that game plan, you're putting on that suppressor on your pistol um, and then you're loading extra mags onto your fanny pack or whatever you have in your go bag. You sling that go bag and then you start making your way home. So what are some things that are going through your head with that type of scenario? Um, what are some things that you're thinking about? Um, you know, what are some of the, the things that you would wanna have in your get home bag uh, to help you, you know, get home? And also, if you're in the sub suburban area and you live, work in the city, um, it could be a long way, especially if you have to walk. And I have to, you know, evade, you know, possible hazards and dangers to me. Uh, so I have to evade those threats. So anyways, think about that type of scenario. Those are the type of things that I think about all the time. Um, but yeah, I'd love to hear what you guys have to say in the comments. If you guys haven't followed us on Instagram already, please go check out Instagram. We are super shadow banned on there, but go check out any behind the scenes stuff. Also, we have a newsletter that's gonna be coming out about our training schedule. Another great way to support us is to come train with us and pick up something on the website. Um, also, we have our X account. And so go check that out. We are getting more consistent about posting there. And also uh, make sure you guys go out and train, become the asset and not the liability. And we'll see you on the next one. Stay safe.